What is up guys and welcome back to another awesome tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create the spin shot with the DJI OM4 using the iPhone 12 Pro Max. As you might know, the DJI OM4 is capable of rotating the camera 270 degrees. Now the spin shot is a great way to give your video a twisting feel to it and you might know it from the movie Inception where they create this barrel roll where everything is twisting around and it just looks super awesome. Now you could also do this handheld but it's much easier using a gimbal to create that shot. So for today's video I have my girlfriend with me. She's going to be acting as the model of today's video and I'm going to show you behind the scenes of how I use the spin shot with the DJI OM4 so that you can use these techniques to your own advantage. So the first thing you want to do is in order to use the spin shot on the DJI OM4 you will have to go into the DJI MIMO app and change the follow mode to spin shot. So let's do that right now. I'm going to open up uh, the DJI MIMO app and I'm going to connect it to the gimbal and then I'm going to head over to the three dots at the bottom left and then go to camera and in the follow mode section I can choose spin shot and by uh, adjusting the joystick to the right or to the left it creates that spin shot. So another thing you want to do is change the control stick speed from fast to slow. This way the spin will look more smoother when you create this effect. Now there is an easier way to change modes faster. When you head to the press M button, instead of selecting photo video, just select quick menu. And this way, when pressing the M button, I can quickly switch um, those modes. So I'm now gonna select the spin shot. So now that I've set up the gimbal to rotate, I'm gonna use the native camera app to shoot this video. So I'm gonna open it up. And first of all, I'm gonna change the frame rate to 60 frames per second. This way I can slow the footage down if I need to. And I'm also going to use the ultra wide angle lens because this is going to be more apparent uh, than using the uh, wide or telephoto lens. So I find that the spin shot is more effective using the ultra wide angle lens instead of the wide or telephoto lens. So I'm going to have Sino walk towards the end and I'm going to follow her with my gimbal and adjust the joystick so that the camera rotates. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually position the camera uh, at an angle so that I can rotate the full 270 degree like so. And it's important to walk heel to toe like a ninja so that you won't have any shaky uh, footage in the end. Even though we're using a gimbal, I still want the smoothest shot possible. So walking heel to toe um, is a great tip. Okay, so we're going to start from here. I'm going to center her and then we're going to start. I'm going to start recording. Three, two, one, go. Nice. So to take this a little bit further, we're going to change the location and create another spin shot so that I can show you in post how you can put these two together to create an awesome uh, speed ramp transition sort of. Another tip I have for you guys is to enable grid lines in the settings. This way you will get the rule of thirds and can frame the subject in the center and keep it that way while creating your shot. So we're going to do the same shot again. She's just going to walk straight forward until the spin shot has ended. Okay, I'm going to position myself and I'm going to hit the record button and go. Nice.
So let's now head back to the studio so that I can show you how to edit these two clips using a mobile editing application. All right, so now that we have two spin shot clips, I'm now gonna show you how to put these two clips together to create a speed ramp transition. And that's gonna look really awesome. We're gonna use a mobile editing application called InShot. InShot is available for iOS and Android users. I have the paid version because I use it a lot for my social media posts, but you can easily use the free version. Just make sure to remove the water mark before you export the video and you can do that as many times as you like. I personally like InShot because the interface is so intuitive and it offers a lot of features such as speed ramp, color grading, and also different output options in terms of frame rate and resolution. By the way, if you wanna follow along, there is a free download link in the video description below to the two clips. So let's first open up InShot, select video, and I'm gonna select the two clips that I want to import, hit the check mark. And as you can see, it's in our timeline. So the first thing I'm gonna do is change the aspect ratio. Since I shot this in a 16 by nine format, I want to change it to that aspect ratio. I'm gonna select 16 by nine and I'm gonna apply it to the other clip as well by selecting the double check mark and apply to all hit the check mark and the next thing I'm going to do is rotate the clip so I'm going to select rotate and the same thing for the second clip so I'm now going to start trimming the clip just to have the best portion I'm going to start with the first one by dragging it to the right I'm going to trim it to this point as she starts walking and same goes with the other side around here. I'm gonna select the second clip and do the same. Around here. And also the end of the clip around here. So the next thing you wanna think about when creating a speed ramp transition is to find a point in the clip where you want the transition to happen. So I want the transition to happen Right as the ground is leveled, I'm going to select the split and then delete. I'm going to do the same thing with the second clip. I want it to start transition around here, split and delete this part. And then you can also play it back and see how it would look like. I think that should work. So let's now start adjusting the speed of our clip. I'm gonna select the first clip and then select speed and then go to the curve section. And I want the clip to start in normal speed and then speed up. And to do that, I'm actually gonna drag the cursor all the way to, to around here. And I want it to speed up here. So it goes like, goes like like this. So I'm going to drag this point to around four and this point as well to around four. And this point, I'm going to drag it all the way here so that it starts to speed up fast. Let's play it back. Okay. I can move this one even closer to the right and this point as well. See how that looks like. Okay, I think that should work. Whoosh, all right, I like that. Let's go to the second clip and do the same. I'm gonna select speed. And then I'm gonna select curve. And I want the first part to speed up and then slow down. Right, so I'm gonna drag this point to around three. And this point also to around three. Bring it close to the first point. And then I'm gonna drag this point right here. See how that looks like? Whoosh. Okay, I can drag this point a little bit more to the left. And this point also. Whoosh. 
I'm gonna turn off the volume uh, on both clips. I'm gonna select volume and then drag it all the way to the left and I'm gonna select the double check to apply it to the other clip as well. Let's play it back. Ooh, that looks nice. I'm liking it. Let's play it back one more time. Yeah, I'm liking that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add music. I get all my music from Artlist. There is a link down below where you get two months additionally for free. Head over to music, tracks, and then imported music. And this is the song I'll use. All right. I'm gonna double tap on the music. And I'm just gonna select the part I want to use in the video clip. See where the beat drops? Boom. That's where I want the transition to happen. And I'm gonna hit the check mark. So let's play it back. All right, that's great. So I'm gonna tap on the end and then select clip beginning. This will drag the audio all the way to the left and I'm gonna trim this part, delete, and then select clip end. So I'm now gonna add a fade in and fade out in the music. I'm gonna select music, double tap on the track, and then I'm gonna fade in around 0.5 seconds and fade out is gonna be two seconds. Hit the check mark. And I'm also gonna add a whoosh sound effect. So I'm gonna head over to effects and then select imported effect. I also got this from Artlist. That's the one I want to use. And with the sound effect, it will make the transition feel more realistic. You can drag it over. All right, let's play it back. Okay. And the whoosh sound effect is a little bit too loud, so I'm gonna double tap on it, and then I'm gonna reduce the volume to around 30%. Okay, let's play it back. Nice. Okay. I'm now gonna add a filter to both clips. I'm gonna select filter, filter, and I'm gonna select film two. I'm liking that one. I'm gonna drag the intensity to around 60. To around 60. And I'm gonna apply this to all the other clips as well. And if you don't have the paid version, you can actually buy one of these packs for like $1 and then you'll get those, all of these film presets. Now, if you don't have the paid version of InShot, make sure before you export your video to remove the watermark by selecting it and then selecting remove once. Head over to the upper right icon and then the resolution is set to 4K and frame rate is 60 frames per second and save that and your video clip is now exported. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I wanted to add a little bonus into it by creating this uh, speed ramp spin shot transition. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new on my channel, make sure to subscribe so that I can keep creating these awesome tutorials for you guys. Now, if you're not part of a Facebook group, the private smartphone filmmaking group that I created is open for everyone that is interested in creating mobile content. And it's a great place where you can share your work and get feedback from others. And here and then I go live to talk about smartphone filmmaking. So make sure to not miss out. Now, if you haven't downloaded my free smartphone filmmaking guide, make sure to do that right now as this will help you get started creating quality mobile content. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.